Six, the doyen of the diplomatic corps in Lagos, El Hajirima Lamine of the Republic of Cameroon, expressed gratitude to the head of state for briefing them and assured him that the good intentions of the federal military government will be relayed to their various countries without delay. And back at Supreme Headquarters, Major General Buhari presided over the swearing-in ceremony of two members of the SMC who were not present at yesterday's official ceremony. They are Brigadier Paul Omu and Colonel Salihu Ibrahim. Also sworn in was the Secretary of the Federal Military Government and Head of Service, Mr. Gray Longe, CFR. A total of 17 military governors were sworn in. They were Brigadier Jeremiah Husseini for Bendel State, Brigadier Mohammed Sani Sami for Bauchi State, and Brigadier John Atongpera for Benue State. Following in the alphabetical order of the states was Major General Abubakar Waziri for Bono State, Naval Captain Edet Akbana Chibon Cross River State, Major General Mohamed Ujega, Gongola State, Brigadier Ike Chuma Sanda Machupu for Imo State, Air Commander Usman Muazu Kaduna, Air Commander Hamza Abdullahi Kanu, Group Captain Adebola Latinwo Kwara, Group Captain Bolaho Mudashiru for Lagos State, Lieutenant Colonel David Mack, Niger State, and Colonel Donaldson Ladikbot Dinyo, Ogun State. Also sworn in were Commodore Michael Bamidele Otiko for Ondo State, Lieutenant Colonel Oladayo Pokuola, Oyo State, Naval Captain Bitru Samuel Atuko, Plateau State, and Brigadier Garuba Duba, Sokoto State. The governors for Rivers and Anambra states are yet to be sworn in. Addressing the military governors immediately after, Major General Buhari said that in many respects, the success of the new military government will be measured by the achievements of the governors at state level. He said that he will be calling on them to produce reports in four months and hopes that they would ensure that areas of salaries and other government debts would have been cleared by then. He told them that their positions as governors should be seen purely as service postings and that they could be redeployed at any time. He further gave guidelines on the appointment of commissioners. Although the problems in the state are enormous, I will not accept that situation as a valid reason for failure by any military governor to accord visible results in the achievement of the priority objectives of this administration. Fraud, indiscipline, corruption, squandimania, misuse and abuse of public office for self or group aggrandizement which had assumed debilitating proportions in the last few years will be dealt with ruthlessly no matter whoever may be involved. The private sector has also its share of crimes against the Nigerian economy, especially in the area of the distribution of basic commodities. All military governors are answerable to the Chief of Staff Supreme Headquarters. Recommendations of persons which you wish to appoint as commissioners should be submitted to the Chief of Staff Supreme Headquarters for clearance. One commissioner shall be selected from each of nine local government areas where the local government areas in your state do not exceed nine. However, where the local government areas exceed this number, you must ensure that commissioners are selected in such a way that they are fully representative of all local government areas in the state. Persons to be selected as commissioners must not have taken active part in partisan politics, for example, as party secretary, chairman, or treasurer. They must be persons of repute, and there must be at least one woman among the commissioners. As I have said, the Supreme Military Council has already decided that the number of local government councils in each state shall be limited to the number in the first schedule part one of the suspended 1979 constitution. In a situation where this administration is determined to revive the economy, there can be no justification for funds allocated to the local government council for the provision of basic amenities such as drugs. And the payment of salaries to teachers and other local government employees being diverted to the payment of salaries, allowances, fringe benefits, etc., to chairmen, members, and other political aides in the multiplicity of local governments 
which the Defense Administration created for political reasons. Mayor General Buhari told the governors to take immediate action on, on all pending cases of armed robbery and send him reports. Finally, the head of state made it clear that governors will not be addressed as the excellencies, nor would there be any such personifications as my administration or my government. Godfrey Yadu, NTA News. Major General Mohamed Buhari today gave facts and figures about Nigeria's internal and external debts. The forum, which was his first world news conference, was held at State House Marina this morning. For more reports of the conference, over to NTA News correspondent Godfrey Yadu. About 300 journalists representing newspapers, periodicals, radio and television stations, as well as major news agencies all over the world, besieged State House Marina this morning for the head of state's maiden world news conference. Soldiers and other security personnel had a hard time controlling the crowd at the entrance. Major General Buhari walked in briskly at about 11.15 and went straight to business. For purposes of clarity, General Buhari also today restated the social and economic evils that were perpetrated by the ousted government of former President Sheo Shagari. He spoke of the mounting debts, budget deficits, and irresponsible spending of public funds as the new military government found it. The record total deficit of all governments increased from 16.6% in 1980 to 31.9% in 1982. These budgetary deficits were financed by either internal or external borrowings or both. Inevitably, this led to a rapid accumulation of public debt whose internal component increased from 4.6 billion to 15 billion from 1977-1982 to, to 22 billion in 1983. The indiscipline in the former government's spending pattern was even more pronounced in the external sector of the economy. The seriousness of this country's propensity to import is reflected by the fact that out of every one naira of new money created, about 68 kobo is spent on imports. At 12.5 billion in 1982, imports were 5.4 billion and 3.4 billion higher than the levels in 1977 and 1980. Every increase in oil export receipts in a particular year was followed in a subsequent year by import liberalization leading to sudden jump in imports. On the other hand, after a downturn in oil exports, imports take longer time to adjust. This thickness of imports to downward adjustments has given rise to rapid accumulation of short-term credits. Consequently, the foreign exchange budget proved totally ineffective as actual foreign exchange disbursements were consistently in excess of the budget. External debt outstanding thus increased from 1.137 billion in 1977 to 5.3412 billion in 1982 and 7.689 billion for 1983. The debt service ratio has also increased steadily at less than 1% in 1977 to 8.9% in 82 and to about 30.5% in 1983. In view of these developments, the federal military government plans to adopt policies which will cut down the level of government expenditure and ensure judicious management of nation's resources. Answering reporters' questions, Major General Buhari said that the government will proceed with utmost speed to ensure Nigeria restores confidence with her external creditors. Licenses will be made available to genuine importers to ensure the availability of raw materials and the rehabilitation of crippling industrial sector, as well as job opportunities for the unemployed. On the return to democracy, the head of state said that the public will be duly informed when the Supreme Military Council takes a decision on the timing. He said efforts will be made to strengthen Nigeria's resource base internally with specific attention to the agro-based and petrochemical industries. Are we going to see parastators and public corporations uh, operate in a manner that can be considered commercial? Um, I, I think you, 
some of you, some of the questions you ask me, you know, pretty well are not possible for me to say them now. Um, I told you the basic things uh, which we intend to do. But one, uh, the most urgent one is to make sure licenses for raw materials which were being used by politicians as a sort of patronage given to political thugs or others who go and sell it to industrialists uh, will stop. Licenses are supposed to be free. You give it to, an, uh, to a manufacturer so that he can uh, buy raw materials to come and uh, produce in the country for people to get employment and for people to get uh, the services. Um, things like that that were being done very wrongly will intend immediately to correct. The head of state said the first priority will be giving to general economic revitalization, beginning with a sharp cut on the level of expenditure and the judicious use of available resources. The administration will also endeavor to recover the ill-gotten wealth amassed by fraudulent politicians during the last Severian government. He disclosed that ex-president Shagari is in Lagos, Hale and Hattie, and corrected the wrong newspaper publication that was flown in and coughed. Mayor General Buhari guaranteed safety for all Nigerians and foreigners alike who conduct themselves properly. Godfrey Odu, NTA News. A new governor has been named for River State. He is Police Commissioner Fidelis Oyahilume, who today took his oath of office along with the military governor of Anambra State, Navy Commander Alison Madweke. From Dodden Barracks, Godfrey Odu reports. Two of them were absent at the official swearing-in ceremony of 17 other military governors last week, Wednesday. They took their oath at a short ceremony presided over by the head of the federal military government and the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Major General Mohamed Buhari, this morning at Dodden Barracks. Also at the ceremony were the chief of staff supreme headquarters and service chiefs. Taking the oath first was Naval Commander Alison Amechi Madweke, military governor of Anambra State. Instead of acting Police Commissioner B. Netoma, as was previously announced by the federal government, Police Commissioner Fidelis Oyakilome was sworn in as governor of River State. The head of state said the change was motivated by discrepancies in credibility following the close family involvement of the first appointee to the ousted civilian government in the River State. directives, the head of state referred the two governors to his speech shortly after swearing in 17 governors last week. Godfrey Odu, NTA News. The head of state, Major General Muhammadu Buhari, today undertook a tour of military installations in Jos and Kaduna. General Buhari, who is already back in Lagos, briefed officers of the 1st and 3rd Divisions. Correspondent Godfrey Odu was in the head of state's entourage. Major General Mohamed Buhari made a round trip to Kaduna and just today, primarily to brief officers on why the military intervened in government and on their responsibilities to society in general as military officers under the new dispensation. Touching down at Kaduna, they were received by the military governor, Air Commodore Usman Muazu, and the commandant of the Nigerian Army Infantry School, Brigadier Magoro, both of whom are also members of the Supreme Military Council. The briefing which took place at the officers' mess along Kanta Road was also attended by naval and air force officers. The address to them was behind closed doors, but it was gathered that General Buhari dwelt on reasons why the military intervened and urged them to be exemplary and not take advantage of their position as military personnel to behave differently. Before leaving Kaduna, the head of state paid a condolence visit to the family of late Brigadier Bako, who lost his life during the change in government. Similarly in Jos, Major General Buhari was received by the military governor naval captain Samuel Atukum and the Gwangwanjos, Dr. Pombot. 
Also at the airport was the new general officer commanding the 3rd Armored Division, who is also a member of the Supreme Military Council. Officers assembled at the main installation in Bassa, where the briefing took place. Before his new appointment, General Buhari was general officer commanding the 3rd Armored Division, and his visit today afforded him opportunity to formally hand over command to Colonel Ibrahim. Being his first trip out of Lagos since he took office a little more than a week ago, the presence of Major General Buhari in the two cities aroused public enthusiasm. Men, women, and children abandoned their immediate preoccupations just to catch a glimpse of the new leader, Godfrey Odu, NTA News.